I'm Eleanor Shano, and during this next half hour, we plan to get you motivated to be a healthier, happier human being. We have a dietitian here to teach us about cholesterol and how to eat healthy, plus a yoga instructor and a personal trainer to get us in shape. It's a show to get you moving, and it's all next on AgeWise. Tell me, does this sound familiar? You skip breakfast, sometimes even lunch, so you can eat a big dinner at a restaurant without feeling guilty. Dining out and paying attention to heart-healthy foods is always a balancing act, but AgeWise health correspondent Gina Catanzarite tackles the cholesterol question and offers tips for avoiding fat, so you can dine out without the guilt. Who doesn't love eating out? The service, the atmosphere, huge portions, decadent desserts. But restaurants could be a real danger zone. How can you control the fat and cholesterol when you do not control what happens in the kitchen? I would say that we are in the service industry and it is our job to serve you, the customer. So when you come to my place, or any place for that matter, if they're serious about being in the service industry, it is my job to provide you with what it is you want. Chef Dennis Rabel at Downtown's Cafe Amante says most of the time special requests are not a problem. The good news is food does not have to be loaded with cholesterol and fat to taste great. You use some cooking techniques that are heart healthy, even though nobody requests it. It's just a standard procedure for you. A few of the things that, that uh, we do here is I use, um, when I grill items, instead of putting them in oil, which is what a lot of places will do, I have a no cholesterol, no fat cooking spray that I use uh, so that things don't stick on the grill. I have a blended oil that is a soybean and an olive oil base that I use to cook with, and that's also cholesterol free. If you have certain requirements for uh, going out to eat, you should never be afraid to ask if something could be done a little different. Or worst case scenario, if the place is absolutely busy and there's, there's no way that they, the kitchen could handle a special request, you could always ask for sauces on the side. A lot of dishes that we have here have a lot of heavy cream sauces uh, or butter sauces. And if, if you don't want that, you can have it without it or you can always just get it on the side and just take a little bit. Sauces on the side are one simple way to control cholesterol, and according to Dr. Don Fisher, there are even more ways to dine out without stressing out. I think cholesterol is really fairly simple. It's not the only fat you need to worry about, but cholesterol is basically found in uh, animal products, uh, especially in dairy products, in marbleized meats, and in uh, shellfish. If you order, you know, standard fish, uh, they're, they're low in cholesterol, low in fat. But again, anything can be prepared to be a fatty food if, if you're not careful. Well, I think in general people need to be aware that it's not just you know, fat content and the like, but it's total calories. Portion size is a huge issue when you dine out. How do you control that? Well, one way is to you know, not feel like you have to fill yourself up and eat everything there. Uh, one other trick is to split a a portion with someone to split an appetizer or split a dessert and uh, is, as we talked about you can still take the doggy bag home as long as you don't eat it as soon as you get in the door. It's not your midnight snack right. maybe that's lunch it's the next day. lunch the next day right. Dr. Fisher warns we should also watch out for hidden calories on the menu. One of my weaknesses is they bring you know the basket of bread to the table at a good restaurant and you know the breads are incredible and then they pour the oil on your bread plate and a little parmesan in there and pretty soon you're soaking up all the oil and adding to it and it doesn't take long you could have had you know 500 calories in bread and oil more menu items that are not heart healthy side dishes such as vegetables in butter sauce and the delicious desserts we all have so much trouble resisting Maybe the portions were quite reasonable through dinner, but then the desserts come and you have this thousand calorie piece of cake that comes to you. And, and I think that's, that's an issue. You know, watch uh, both before the meal and after the meal what's served. 
Knowing basic cookbook vocabulary can help you cut cholesterol, and you can still dine out on delicious foods. Steer clear of choices prepared by sauteing, pan frying, and deep frying. Lean toward menu items prepared by poaching, simmering, boiling, and steaming. Chances are that if you're going to poach something or grill something or, or broil something or bake something, you can control the amount of fat that you use. And at least here, we use the cooking spray. So there is no fat. There is no cholesterol. There's nothing to worry about as far as getting it done. So now that you know the tricks to controlling the fat and cholesterol, dining out does not have to be out of the question. When I go out to eat, you know, I want to make sure that I get what I'm paying for. If you have certain requirements for uh, going out to eat, you should never be afraid to ask if something could be done a little different. A little fresh pepper for you? No, I'm fine. Okay, wow, good report. Joining us now to talk a little more about controlling our cholesterol is Laurie Lang, a registered dietitian. You know, there were so many good suggestions there. Absolutely. And the one thing, Laurie, I picked up is that it is okay today to say, hey, can you prepare this a little differently? Absolutely. And most restaurants, as he, as the chef was saying, are so pleased to remove the preparation with butter and those sorts of things so that you can have an, a nice piece of salmon cooked in a way that's not going right. to raise your cholesterol. Okay, we were talking about dining out dinner time. Right. How about lunchtime? I know that this has happened to all of us. I mean, we live a fast, hectic life. Right. You're starving, and there's a fast food restaurant on every corner. You go in, and how can you do this? Without just blowing it all. <laughs> well, we brought some things here. We did. I want to start with the bad stuff or the good stuff? Let's start with the bad stuff. How about this? <laughs> That's just about the worst thing that, that I found as I was looking um, through this the is nutrition a information. That is, a, that is a double whopper with cheese. I just wanted to throw in a little fact that I found that's sort of appalling. In the year 2000, Americans spent a record $110 billion on fast food, which was more than was spent on higher education personal computers or new cars. Okay. Well, but it <laughs> I believe it. I yeah. believe it because they are on every corner. Yeah. We do get hungry. The advertising blitz is is surrounding us. Let's get back to this yeah. whopper. Okay, if, the whopper. If I eat this for lunch, what have I consumed? <laughs> if you consumed the whopper for lunch, you have consumed 1010 calories and here's the kicker. 67 grams of fat, 26 of which are saturated. Now, normally the recommendation for somebody who is consuming 2,000 calories a day, which is more than most women mm -hmm. need to consume, mm -hmm. is 50 or 60 grams of fat, and at the very most, 20 grams of saturated fat. 10 grams is faster, is, is better. And it also has 1,500 milligrams of sodium, so. It's a killer. It's, it's a killer. A killer. Mm -hmm. Okay, anything else bad here? Let's really see. Really bad, and this, this one I wanted to sort this of take a, a moment with. This is a chicken Caesar. That's a chicken Caesar from let's Arby's, see. which is their, one of their market fresh sandwiches. And let's take a look at that. I wanted to include oh, this because- Oh, it looks because really good. It was it called to my attention that because they're called market fresh, the perception is mm -hmm. that it's a little healthier and, right. and it's not your regular burger. Mm -hmm. and, and something like chicken Caesar sounds kind of innocuous in right, terms of- Right, right, and it's a wheat bread. And that it's a wheat good. bread, exactly. Okay. How about this? It has 820 calories, 38 grams of fat, nine of which <coughs> are saturated, and 2,160 milligrams of sodium. Okay, so that <laughs> one goes. That's not a good one. But that's not to say that there aren't some good choices at, at Burger King. Actually, we have um, another, we have a good choice from Burger King. They've just started to do veggie burgers. Well, but this one also is about a third the size <laughs> it's of the Whopper. about a third the size. I but held that Whopper, and that weighs a pound. <laughs> this is this is a few mm -hmm. ounces. That's, so that's lighter fare. The fair. size, right? It is that lighter. That is lighter fare. Um, however, you could also uh, uh, have a salad to to go along with mm -hmm. that. And so um, the, the the veggie burger is is always a good choice because mm -hmm. of course it's going to have far less saturated fat. Okay. Um, okay. This looks really good. This looks yummy. Actually, it looks like a dessert. It, it, it can be used as a dessert, or you could use it as a breakfast. Just because I wanted to try one, I had one for breakfast the other day. This is their uh, McDonald's yogurt and fruit parfait, mm -hmm. and actually it is made with low-fat yogurt. So it it has a total of I believe 380 calories. It has 30% of the RDA of calcium, which means 300 milligrams okay. of calcium, a good full choice. serving of fruit. Um, and so you can put the crunchies in there and it tastes pretty good. And so it cannot, you know, and either be used as a substitute breakfast or 
um, or possibly a dessert. Way better than the other desserts from I know fast I'm food rushing places. you through because that's we're fine. rushing out sure. of time. We have a okay. minute. Now, this, this is, is a tiny little baby here. What is this? That's a tiny little baby, but let's look at the other things also that came from Taco Bell. Um, the cool thing about Taco Bell is they have beans. Now, when we talk about some better choices, beans are one of those therapeutic choices. Mm -hmm. Not only is it low fat, it has a lot of uh, soluble fiber that actually lowers bad cholesterol. So it's a it's a m sort of a magical choice. So their their bean burrito, mm -hmm. joined by <laughs> joined by their um, this is supposed to be a chicken soft taco, but it looks like they gave me steak. <laughs> and then this is a serving of their nachos and cheese. And okay. so. Uh, excuse me, um, yeah, beans and cheese. So the point is that at, uh, at Taco Bell, you can do uh, a low saturated fat but high soluble fiber. Okay. And watch the salads. This is a good one, but sometimes you can be really fooled That's by right. the salad bar. That's right. And this actually is, is uh, the mandarin chicken salad that they offer at Wendy's now. There are a lot of wonderful things about this salad. It has white meat chicken, it has the, the mandarin oranges, and it also actually has dark, bright, salad greens, which is not the case necessarily with, this is a McShaker that has more iceberg. Um, of course, we know that the darker greens are more, um, are more nutritious. The nice thing about this is it's very low in calories, about 150. You can, they, they give you all of the, the additives separately. I would throw away, here in the world according to me, I would throw away hmm, the crispy rice noodles because they're not really nutritious. Mm -hmm. The roasted almonds uh, do have some fat, however, good stuff. this is good fat. Good fat. This is, I okay. would put that on top and then this is the killer. The dressing is very tasty, however the dressing has more calories than all of the things put together. <laughs> so I would just, you know, drizzle a little bit or use the fork dip okay. method. A lot of good information yeah. in a little bit of time. Right. Laurie Lang, thank you so much. Thank you. Now, we've just learned how to eat healthy. Next, we're going to focus our attention on exercising to stay healthy. To do that, we've asked a certified yoga instructor to join us. Just wait until you see what she has planned. Adrian Barr is up next on AgeWise. Oh, I hope you're ready to join us. You know, we love yoga around here. But grab a chair and follow along. This is Adrienne Barr, and she's going to teach us a unique form of yoga. It's using a basic straight back chair. And Adrienne, this is chair yoga, and it's really designed for people who say, I want to do yoga, but I can't get down on the floor. Exactly. No <laughs> excuses around here. Exactly. Let's get started. Yeah, there's a way to do yoga for everyone, your ability, your age, your weight. There's always a way. It's never too late to start never. either. Never, never too yoga, late. And yoga, if you had to pick one exercise, and this is my opinion, and I bet you agree, okay. if you had to pick one exercise, it would be yoga. Yeah. It keeps you. Absolutely. Uh, it keeps you flexible. Mm -hmm. It creates body strength, stamina, and calms your mind. Yep. Okay. Yep. Let's go yes. to work. Yes. All right. Well, let's have a seat, and we're going to start with a basic breathing exercise. So, as you know, because that's a very important part of yoga. You've done yoga. Breathing. It's the most important part. So, just bring your hands comfortably to your lap on your thighs and sit up nice and tall. You want to mm. feel as if someone's pulling the crown of the head towards the ceiling, mm -hmm. yeah, lengthening the waist. And the full yogic breath, breathing in and out through the nose, place one hand on the belly and one hand on the chest. As you inhale, you want to make sure the belly expands and then the chest. That's it. So and you start down you here start and down then here fill up. And let it rise, yeah. And then as you exhale, you release the belly and release the chest. It's like a balloon deflating. Yeah, exactly. So try that one more time, inhaling. And exhale, release the belly and soften the chest. Very simple. Oh, you know, just a couple of breaths is calming. And you feel, you feel centered and you feel calm. Okay. So we'll move on to some head and neck circles. Mm -hmm. Great for headaches, tension in the neck and head. Start just by dropping the chin to the chest. We'll circle the head to the right. Bring the right ear to the right shoulder. Shoulders relaxed. Mm -hmm. Head goes back. Feels very nice. Head moves left. Mm -hmm. And then back down to the center, and we'll take. Mm. How one about to those the little left. scrunchy noises I hear? Those crunchy noises. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's releasing the tension, the knots, all <laughs> in your neck. So it's good. As long as there's no pain, you're okay. So we'll do one to the left. Start by inhaling. We'll coordinate the breath to the left. 
exhale, the head goes back. Inhale, the head goes right. And exhale, the chin to the chest. One side feels a little stiffer than the other. That's that normal. Okay? People usually carry tension on one side or the other. Yeah? So we'll continue to move down the body with some shoulder rolls. So you can let your arms relax. Mm -hmm. and you're going to bring the shoulders forward, way up to your ears, and then mm -hmm. drop them back and down. You can bring your arms to the outside of the chair, really opening the chest. Yeah. And oh, again. It feels so good. It does. Hope you're doing the this breath. with us. I know. Coordinating the breath. Inhale forward and up, and exhale back and down. So you keep that connection of the breathing. We'll do it one more time. Inhale forward and up. Exhale back and down. Yogis breathe through their nose yes. and exhale through their nose, That's right? Correct. That's Yogis correct. Yogis say you only eat using your mouth. <laughs> that is correct. So let's interlace the hands behind the chair. Oh, that even feels better. Yes, yeah, squeezing your shoulder blades together, open the chest. Mm -hmm. Great for the lungs, respiratory system, mm. asthma, allergies. You can even take the head to the ceiling, really opening up the throat. Oh. Feels wonderful. Take one nice deep breath mm. and exhale, release the arms. Mm. Good. And we're ready to stand up, okay? As you probably know, downward facing dog, one of the mm -hmm. overall best postures. We can come to the back of the chair. Place the hands about as wide as your shoulders and step the feet back, hip width apart. Okay. You're going to press the chest towards the floor. You're looking straight down. You want to lengthen your spine. Bye. Yes, goodbye. <laughs> That's beautiful. So Eleanor has a nice straight spine. Mm. Yes, you're strengthening your arms, your shoulders, your back. This is good for mm. hot flashes, believe it or not, and menopause. Mm. And it's really calming for the mind. Oh, right. and then up Come slowly. up slowly. How many, how many repetitions should you do? Three. Three. I would say three. And then when you get better at it, you can actually just hold the posture once mm -hmm. for a longer amount of time. But starting out, you can take three repetitions, maybe for three to five breaths each. Okay. Yeah? What's next? Let's do mountain pose, feet and legs together, big toes touching. Interlace your fingers and raise the pointer fingers straight up. Bring your elbows next to your ears. Good, she's using her breath. And take the focus up towards the hands. Good. Again, she's got nice length in her spine, nice length in the waist. Another good one for the lungs, asthma. And this is very good for degenerative effects mm. of aging on and all the it joints. it also helps. Yoga is wonderful for balance. Yes, absolutely. And as we get older, I think that is that is the one thing yep. that is critical if you want to avoid slips and falls. Yeah. We have about 30 seconds. What can we do in 30 seconds? In 30 seconds, let's try the forward bend. We'll try it from the side. Okay. All right. I know you're pretty flexible. Bring your hands to the seat of the mm -hmm. chair. And we can walk your feet in even closer okay. this time. Mm -hmm. And lower the crown of the head to the chair. Mm. Good. So she's bringing fresh blood, fresh oxygen to her brain, relaxing the heart. When you're standing up all day, the blood just drains into your legs and the feet. So it's good to hang upside down. Yeah? OK. And you're ready to go. I am really ready to go. <laughs> you do not believe in those few minutes how much better you can feel. The whole thing Crazy. can take five minutes five and minutes you can do it so day. many times a day. Adrian Barr, thank you thank so much. You. Chair, Chair yoga. yoga. You know, as we grow older, it's even more important than ever to maintain strong, healthy bones and body, especially the bones. And one of the best ways I know is with weight resistance. Next on Age Wise, I want you to meet my personal trainer. He's going to show you how to strengthen and tone your muscles, so stick around. I know a lot of you may not think that weightlifting is something that older adults should be doing, but think again because research shows that the benefits are enormous. This is my personal trainer. His name is Frank Sedlak, and I, I, I credit you, Frank, for allowing me to go through the airport and carry my own luggage and pick up my grandkids and take us through. We only have like about five minutes, but okay. take us through. Just some basic things that you can do in your own home. Sure. We're going to just, all we're going to use here are some uh, dumbbells 
and an exercise ball. All these things can be purchased at a sporting goods store anywhere or even a convenience store somewhere. But what we're going to do is we're just going to start off. We're going to do a whole body routine. I'm going to have okay, you lay am I down. Am sitting the right way? No, well, We're going to be way. laid down on the ball. Okay. We're going to start the way down? off. Yeah, just go ahead and kind of support your back with the ball. And we're going to start off working the chest okay. with some what we call bench presses. Okay, and how many pounds here? These are about eight pounds each, All each right. dumbbell. So okay. I'm just going to have you lower the weight, mm. right, just like that, and then exhale as you exert. So in this case, we'll be ex okay. exhaling as you push. Okay, now we're going to try yep. to show as many movements as possible. Right, so, so normally you do about, what, 10 to 15? 10 to 12 these? reps. Okay, and this is for the movement. chest. And this is for the chest. Okay. Now, so you stay right there. I'll grab these from you. And staying mm. in that position, we're going to now... This position feels very good. I bet it looks good. Now we're going to do an exercise that works the upper back primarily. It also gets the chest and abdominals a little bit, but this is called a pullover. Okay. That's it. And you're inhaling on the way down, and then you'll exhale on the way up. Okay, Frank, uh, talk about for a minute the benefit of this exercise ball because it does it does provide a nice soft surface for your spine. It really does. It gives you support and it also helps in balance. You were talking mm -hmm. just a little while ago about yoga and how it helps you in balancing. This does the same okay. thing. Okay. Exercising Moving on a ball along. like this. I'm going to take this from you. How about sitting up on the ball now? And we're going to, why don't we turn and okay. face to your right there a little bit. Face we're, this way? Yes. Okay. We're going to do an exercise for the shoulders as you're sitting on the ball. Mm -hmm. Okay, just, we're going to have you just start with the weights down by your hips mm -hmm. and have you raise out to the side. Okay. Okay, a little bend in your elbows. Mm -hmm. Kind of looking straight ahead so we keep everything uh, in the line. You know, this is so important for women, upper body strength. And, right. and you know, when we talk about is it ever is it ever too late to start? It's never too late to start I unless you have some medical reason. Otherwise, the benefits are limitless. Got to tell you, I didn't do a speck of exercise until I was in my late 40s. Never did this until I was over 50. So, I mean, I'm telling you, you can start and you can go slow. What are we going to do next? Now we're going to go into the biceps. Okay. Working the upper arms here. We're just going to curl the weights, curl okay. the dumbbells. Okay. Just like just pivoting from your elbows. Okay. See, so so far we've hit the chest, we've hit the back, the shoulders. Now we're working on the biceps. Frank, and I feel that a personal trainer is is terribly important because I wouldn't I wouldn't know when to increase weights. I wouldn't do these things right, maybe. But how do you pick a personal trainer? What do you look for? Well, uh, you want to try to find one uh, that has a college degree in some health-related field, certified by mm -hmm. some reputable uh, companies like the American College of Sports Medicine, National okay. Strength and Conditioning, and uh, those types of companies usually produce the best trainers. Okay. These are for the upper body, and that's what we uh, really need to concentrate on right. as women anyway. Right, because um, pound for pound, uh, women compared to men are just as strong in their legs, but the upper body is where it and tends to lack a little bit. And we lose muscle every single year after, what, the age of 30, right? Uh, 35, 40, yeah. somewhere you start to lose a little bit. And what does it turn into? It turns into fat. Well, it doesn't actually turn into <laughs> fat, but when you <laughs> well, lose weight, it gets that's replaced right. by fat. And uh, one last quick question. Sure. I've heard people say, you know, I started to lift weights, and I got on the scale, and I weighed more. Why is that? Well, um, just because muscle is a little bit more dense than fat is, mm -hmm. um, but it, it, and it takes up less space than fat. That way you may look and feel better in your clothes, um, yet weigh maybe a little bit more. It's just because the muscle takes up less space. Right. It's, the scale's not as important as what the mirror right. shows. Well, I said before that, um, you know, if you had to pick one exercise, it should be yoga. I take that back. I think you really need every every older adult needs to. I don't care. Just go into the into the pantry and get a can of baked beans and, and start lifting them. The benefits are are enormous. Yeah, are start really. slowly. Absolutely. Yeah. You want to only do one set of all these movements, about ten or twelve reps. Just get comfortable with the form. And uh, as far as selecting weight. You kind of want to feel your muscles exhausting towards the end of the 10 or 12 reps, right. and that's how you know you're doing Never the right way. Never two days in a row. Give your muscles a break. Well, yeah, the rest is just as important as the stimulation phase. Okay. Frank Sedlak, my personal trainer, thank you for, for my pleasure. Keeping, keeping this body going. After all, I figure this is where I have to live for the rest of my life, and we got to take care of it. I want to thank all my guests for joining me today. Join us next week when we're going to learn about grandmas who do windows, but we're not talking about the windows in your home. Plus, there's a new restaurant in the area. We're going to meet the chef who promised to whip up something really special for us. Until then, I'm Eleanor Shano. Remember, the good years start right here. Be well, everyone, and I'll see you soon.